herbarium is a collection of dried plant specimens. They have plants from the past six centuries that document um, what plants grew where. There's a, about, uh, about 8 million, probably 7.95 million, um, as best we can tell. The goal of a herbarium isn't really to have just one of each kind, like you might if you were stamp collecting, or maybe even a library. No, the goal is to have many representatives. Anyone with a legitimate excuse to study our specimens can, and what they're mostly doing is studying them to see if they're correctly named, to see where they grow, and maybe to do some DNA sampling of them as well. So the value of using herbarium collections, you can access and take samples from numerous species, um, you know, all in a short time frame because they're all there in, in one place. So the, the sampling from a herbarium specimen um, can really be pretty simple. For example, the herbarium at the New York Botanical Garden. We usually only need as much leaf tissue as like the size of your thumbnail in order to get enough DNA to do this sort of study. If you want DNA out of something bad enough, you can probably find a way to, to get it. Now we're actually doing much more sophisticated work at the genomic level where they're actually looking at, at individual genes and that's what the soltises are doing. They're looking at the genes for the um, origin of nitrogen fixation. Really for decades, plant geneticists have been interested in trying to um, engineer this nitrogen fixing symbiotic capability um, into plants that don't currently have that. And if that were the case, you could imagine that crop plants that are not able to do this wouldn't need fertilizer. So what we've done uh, with the massive increase in DNA sequencing capability is take a look at about 15,000 of those species in this group of plants, the nitrogen fixing group. And so for the first time, we're getting a really good picture of where this trait appears, where it's lost. So now we can take a look at those same genes on a really massive scale across this entire group of plants. And those will really uh, allow us to, you know, kind of tease apart the underlying genetic machinery that makes this happen. I think studies like this show the value of uh, these enormous herbarium collections and collections in general become more valuable with time because there's so many cool things we can do today that we couldn't do 20, 40, 50 years ago. And I think that trend will continue. We'll be doing things with collections 50 years from now that we probably can't imagine now. We're, we're actively adding. It's important that we keep collecting because if we want to continue to document how, how vegetation has changed over time, which is going to have a huge impact on humanity um, because we depend on plants for everything, then we have to keep collecting them through this period of change so that people in the future will be able to see the evidence of how change happened through the plants.